guys, this is a dime. Look at the size of these four parts. Are you kidding me? Look at that tiny part. And that's a hair. Think I'm going to be able to solder that? <laughs> you snuck up on me. You know, you must be going through the back door um, of those. The, uh, I know exactly what's happening now. You're one of those non-subscribing people. You just go in there and sneak up and take a look. And once you get your look on, you leave. Well, I'll tell you what, it's pretty easy to not do that anymore. There's that little subscribe thing down there and you hit that bell and voila, you get notified of all the awesome content that this channel brings to you. And there were some of you that said, hey, where's Bear? Well, come on, come here, Bear. Oh, say hi, come on, come on, say hi. Oh, he's been around. See, take a look, you're on camera. Yep. He's just, uh, since I'm in the garage, it's winter time. Um, usually the door is open and he doesn't really like being in the garage without being open so he can see everything outside. So anyways, today is gonna be another part of the video series of soldering. Today is gonna be what's called surface mount devices, uh, SMDs. We're gonna show you some tips and, tips and tricks on how to get that mounted without going through what we call a reflow process where the board is basically uh, templated on with a squeegee with solder paste and the parts are laid on top. This is usually an automated process done for um, yeah, through you know bulk manufacturing. I've seen some pretty awful content out there demonstrating SMDs and soldering them on. Some using a reflow with a, uh, a you know like a heat gun and stuff, and some just with a solder iron. Today's we're just going to do with soldering iron techniques and what to do and what not to do. And uh, I don't want to waste any more time. Let's get going. Since we are not using solder paste and a heat gun or doing that type of reflow, we actually have to call what's called pre-tinning the pad. Tinning the pad so we could uh, grab the part with the tweezers reflow the solder with the solder iron. This way we can center the part and make sure it lays flat against the board. Now, you may be asking yourself, is that actually enough solder to hold down the part? And the answer is yes. If you look at the, right here, the solder joint that I'm putting down now, there is only contacts on the top and the bottom. It doesn't go around this part at all. So yeah, this is all I have to work with. You're not gonna see any solder glow over these resistors as I'm applying it. And you may ask yourself, wow, that is a huge ball of solder that I just laid down. Actually, it's not. It's an almost a perfect amount. You see here when I reflow it down, center it apart, it actually flows concaves down. That's what you're looking for. The microscope that I have is not the greatest. Sorry about this, but um, when you don't want it to ball up, and that's key. Here I'm adding a little bit more heat because I noticed that it wasn't going wrapping around as well. I could always retouch this up later if I want, but it's still not as cosmetically pleasing as I would like, but still good. So. What I'm going to do is uh, move on to the next one. And just going to repeat this process, pre-tinning the pad. This is going to be the process for all these parts. And grab the part and put it on there, reflow, and put it back on. Now, you're going to see this a lot in here. Either I get the jitters or I mean, it, it, the part just slides a little bit and you got to recenter it. It's no big deal. Just Keep it on there and look, it still came out really good. There is still enough solder on here. I know you're going to be like, it. ask yourself, well, it's not covering the whole pad. Well, again, it's not that much contact for this part. Uh, you can actually see the vacant areas of where the white ceramic is. Uh, so I'm just applying enough solder on here where it's not going to concave. I mean, it's not going to overflow. And I mean, that's about it. 
These, again, these are the biggest parts I'm putting on. If you look at this <laughs> tip of this iron iron, they're actually still very small parts. Say you reach a scenario here that you're moving this part around like this right here and still not centered. This is still perfectly good here, mind you. But you really, really want this to be perfect. And you keep on messing around with this part. And then your solder joint looks like that. This, uh, I still wouldn't use the solder joint, but you're gonna still use this as your glue down, basically. You're gonna solder your other pad down, and this is where I like to use flux. I have a flux pen. I don't use a syringe. I don't use a, a needle dipped in flux. I think the flux pen works great. You see here, I dab it, and I don't have a whole bunch of flux everywhere. Really nice. And then I clean off my solder tip, take a little dab to it, and it's like magic. Everything just looks hunky-dory. All right, so now we're going to do the same process with these. These are definitely a lot smaller than the ones I was just putting on. I just pre tinned the pad, put it on, and solder it. Um, honestly, as you can see, I really like doing this size. And actually, the pads on these are literally a perfect size for soldering. You'll see that the technique works really good on here. Um, you know, it does sometimes take a little while to get the heat going, but once it does, these come out like perfect almost every time. So, um, I did have a problem with this pad of heating it up, but once it did, done. Again, these have the same type of terminals on it. They wrap around the edges, so you're not going to see any solder flow over the top of them. It's just, just enough solder. You know, it's... Again, it looks like there's a lot, but there really isn't. So the microscope is kind of playing a little trick on you. I'm going to put the part on again, heat up the pad, and proceed forward. I mean, I I don't know. Maybe I'm, it was just in a rhythm, but these parts just lay down really well for me. And uh, it's, uh, it's a shame that uh, this is just a practice board. I could put these parts anywhere. There's no, the, it says R13, E3, it doesn't matter. Um, I only tried to gauge these parts with um, the pad and the distance between. And uh, these were almost a perfect fit, as you see how easily these lay down. I've watched a bunch of videos on YouTube about people laying down these SMD chips and laying down a nice thick bunch of flux. You know what guys? Do you see me using it here? No, because some SMD parts just don't need it. Proper technique will take care of it. You know, it's, you see that, yeah, sure, some parts like right here, I'm having a little bit of a difficult time, but you be patient and it'll go through. As long as your board's clean, you don't have to worry about it. You know, flux, sure, will help with flow, but it's not needed for everything. If you have multiple pins and doing a drag solder, yes. If you're doing a touch-up, definitely, it's good to use some flux. But people just cake it on, like it's syrup on a pancake. Here, I'm just using a, what I call, it's called a, a flux pen. I just do a couple dabs on it, and I do the reflow. Wipe down the tip of my siren iron, do a little dab, You'll see on the right-hand side of this chip, I just don't like the way it looks. And could it still work? Yes, but to me, that's not a great solder joint. I'm going to dab it here. Uh, nope, it's not the way I still like it. Do it one more time. Should have wiped on the tip, but I didn't. And I got a little bit of a unicorn. So I'm going to just wipe it down, go to the other side, and then back here, and then boom, done. Here are some caps that I'm going to put on. These are almost the same size as the resistors, but they pose their own challenges. The reason why, they're thicker and not wide. 
And what could happen with these caps is they could actually tombstone on you. And that is not a fun thing to deal with. Um, and plus, with the layout of this board, there's really uh, only one row that I could actually lay down nicely. Unfortunately, with my microscope, I didn't know that there was a size limit before that you could set and it automatically stop. And I was soldering after this pass here, and I didn't, it didn't record. So you'll see this row right here that I laid down, and it came out perfectly. I actually didn't have one tombstone. But now I have to go down to this row right here, and it is, the pads are wider. I still wanted to give you a demonstration of this, and... This is where you're going to see some difficulty with the tombstoning because I really have to line this up almost perfectly. Same process, you're going to just tin one side and you're going to just try to line this up as best as you can. And this is, I believe, the only chip I line up perfectly on the first try. Um, as you can see, it barely even touches the pad on the left. You notice that there was a bit of solder down there on the bottom before I laid down this chip and it was okay because uh, I did tilt the board and there was no solder. It actually wicked back into the pad. So here is where flux comes in handy, right? You see that solder joint? It almost looks what we call a cooling solder joint. I'm going to just dab a little bit of the flux. Now this is again where the pen comes in great. You don't really see a whole bunch of caked in there. And I shouldn't have done it the second dab, but you know, you just tap and touch it up, boom, done. I'm going to do this again with this pad, and this is when I start to get some difficulty here. Um, <laughs> challenges await me. I'm going to line this up here. As you can see, this is a pretty thick part. The flatter it is, the easier it is to solder, and it's not centered. Now the fun begins. Slide, oh, nope. You know, this is actually when I'm looking at the part instead of underneath the microscope, and I should never have done that. And boom. You saw that the soldering iron just went right underneath, didn't have a good grip on it, and I'm just gonna leave it like that. I know it doesn't look pretty, but this is where we can always touch it up later. Remember what I said, you already have an anchor, so, might as well just start and soldering the other side and touch it up later. That one I'm not that side I'm not gonna worry about, but I'm not even gonna try to flux it. I want to see what happens if I just add a bit of solder and yep, yeah, worked up rather great. You're gonna probably say, well, it looks like it's just hugging down the side. And again, this microscope isn't the best. It's actually flowing really good along the side there. It's just kind of like an illusion. Um, it has a nice sloping edge to it. You don't want to uh, flow anymore. You want to try to minimize the ball effect. Anyone that shows a video and doesn't show any complications with soldering and it's perfect every time, they're fooling you. It is, sure, it is skilled, but you're going to have problems just like what I'm going to have here. I'm centering the part, and again, you know, it doesn't help that these are you know, very far apart pads compared to the part. But, yeah, it... it <laughs> Now it's stuck to the iron. I'm trying to center it, grab it, and nope, didn't work out for me. So basically, just start over. It's not worth it. And uh, yeah, again, there's that little piece of solder that's underneath. I'm not going to worry about it too much because it's going to wick through. And this is only a practice board, anyways. And we're going to attach the other side again. The solder downside doesn't look pretty. I'm not worried about it. We're going to reflow it and it will look a lot better.
A little dab will do you guys. You don't need to cake on flux to get it to work. I promise you. So look, I tapped it, tapped it, done. That's all it needs. And here it is, the smallest part that I've ever attempted to put on at home without using professional equipment. I'm telling you, this is basically life size right there in that picture. I mean, again, the tweezers, I mean, it is super tiny. This is a practice board from Amazon. And look at these pads. They're way too far apart and they're not symmetrical. It's it's amazing that I could even get a bead of solder on these. But what's amazing enough, I get it to actually adhere right here. But watch what happens with the tweezers. It sticks. And with that small of a part, it will come off 90% of the time. I lucked out. Problem is, is now I do have many different solder iron tips. Problem is, is if they're too small, you're not going to heat up the pad. And if you wind up heating up the part, and it's going to flow on the other end. So what do you do? You put a little ball on there, and you drag it across like that. That's all you can do. I can't believe that the first one came down without a problem, but I'm telling you, it's never that easy, guys. It really isn't. We're going to do another one here. Let's see how this one turns out. Same process. I'm going to put another bead down, and we're going to attempt to lay this one down. Well, this is what happens, guys. You should always have more than one set of tweezers. I should have practiced what I preach, right? Part sticks to it and just becomes a nuisance. No reason to have that much frustration where you could easily rectify it by having a clean set and a dirty set. So I'm going to grab it at the mo outermost edge as possible because if we don't, all the thermal energy is going to go to the, onto the tweezers themselves instead of the part. I'm able to get, lay down this part, even though I have some of the tweezers in the solder, and it's on the angle. And you know what? I really don't care. It's going to stay that way because I actually have part of the part actually onto the solder pad itself. It's going to ball up on this solder joint, and same thing. You know what? It is what it is. I'm not using solder paste and a, a heat gun. It's a shame that uh, my uh, settings on my microscope didn't pick up the one above because that was the two above were the perfect ones that I was able to lay down. And uh, it's you know it's a microscope that I only used a couple times. And I did not know that uh, there was a duration setting on it. I did catch it in time. This was the last part that I was uh, going to lay down. Luckily, I saw it and was able to record it. You could see when I'm laying down these parts, the these pads are just too far apart. The solder is kind of like almost stretching to it. Um, you could definitely see it on the top two. Um, this one is most likely the most centered one I have, but you can still see the solder is pulling to the part. You don't want this. Uh, this is Again, these pads are just too far apart for this uh, this part. It should be a little bit closer together, okay? And we've actually made it a lot easier. I do a little bit of a touch up and done. Um, it's you gotta be careful with these parts though. You touch them up too quickly, it's gonna come right off. I clean the board, and it's just a, a pass of uh, the parts here, and uh, came out pretty good. Um, I did not show this these uh, this next set that I laid down because they're just too similar to the first set. So, but as you see, came out rather nice. I appreciate you watching my channel and taking time out of your day. I would really appreciate if you could please subscribe, and that way I know that you do enjoy the content and hit a good like on this. Um, let me know if there's a uh, Another tutorial you'd like me to do, I do have some more in the works, but I'm waiting on some specialized equipment so to give you some better content. Again, thank you for watching Tripods Garage, and we'll catch you the next time.